After a period of time where it felt like they had given up on making running shoes, Under Armour now brings us the Flow Velocity Wind. But is it any good? Or is it just another Under Armour shoe? It's time to lace them up and take them for a first run. Eight point one seven miles, eight minutes, forty four seconds per mile, one hundred and thirty eight beats per minute, going for a first run in the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind, and having a surprisingly good time in it. But the shoe definitely wasn't what I was expecting. Before I give you my detailed thoughts on this shoe, though, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that I purchased myself. No one sent it to me. No one's paying me to make this video, and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So. With that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind. We've got a 26 millimeter stack height shoe with an eight millimeter drop. The midsole is unique. It looks like kind of there's like a two tier system, but I believe it's all just one piece of foam. There's that black smooth part that's kind of on the upper part of the midsole. And then there's the white part that looks kind of like it's like an outsole system, but it's actually, I think all the same one piece of foam. Now this flow midsole foam is new for Under Armour running, although I do believe it has been used previously in some basketball shoes. Now this foam is unique because there's no outsole required for this midsole at all. If you look at it, it's just the same midsole foam. There's 0% rubber coverage on this outsole. For the upper, we have the Warp. It's a very lightweight and max breathability upper. Ended up being pretty comfortable for me. There's a little bit of padding on the tongue, but nothing that's too crazy. And there's actually a deceptively large amount of padding around the back of the shoe on the heel and up towards the Achille. Ends up being very comfortable there without looking incredibly puffy. So I feel like they've done a good job of striking a balance there. All told, this entire package comes in at a relatively lightweight of 8.5 ounces for a shoe that I believe is supposed to be either a daily trainer or a daily trainer that could be used for a little bit of the faster stuff. So specs aside, what was it like to actually run in this shoe? I think the first thing that I'll say, it's a lightweight shoe. It's lighter than it looks. In previous Under Armour shoes that I've run in, they kind of felt very dense, like heavier than they looked. When you pick them up, they're always kind of a bit of a surprise that like that there was some heft to it. But this one is lighter than it looks. The foam though, isn't a very soft foam. It was a firm midsole, but a midsole that I was still feeling like I was adequately protected from road impact and it didn't feel heavy. And I felt like I was actually getting pretty smooth movement through the gait cycle. So I was really actually pleasantly surprised. I feel like the shoe is actually a pretty agile shoe. If you look at it, it's different from kind of like a lot of the shoes that are hitting the market today. There is a bit of a bevel in the heel here, but there isn't like a huge like elf flare in the back. And there isn't a giant rocker up front either. It has kind of more of a standard running shoe kind of geometry. I felt like the shoe had that nimbleness to it that I'm looking for in a shoe that I might take for my daily training, but also might want to take for some faster days. I did have some strides in today's easy run. So I was able to test it out at kind of like the range of paces from easy all the way up to about mile pace. And, and kind of all those spots, it did pretty well. I felt like the way that the shoe was set up it felt like it was giving me a very uh, quick snap up to the butt. Maybe it's because that firmness of the midsole just had me kind of like picking my legs up behind me really quick. And that in turn also led to a little bit of a shorter stride in a good way. So I felt like it was really encouraging, very snappy paces and a quick turnover. And it was actually pretty enjoyable to run in. And it wasn't just a shoe that I kind of had to stay on the forefoot uh, in order to be able to get that benefit. On easier paces where I'm a little bit more relaxed, I'm using a little bit more of that shoe, that midsole foam still felt pretty good to run on. That upper, that warp upper fits really well. I felt like it gave me plenty of room while still being very snug. Under Armour shoes for me have always fit pretty well. Nothing too exceptional about it, except for that I don't really notice it 
which I think is overall a very good thing. There's room in the toe box. I wouldn't call it a very roomy shoe, but it's not snug and kind of like the running shoe, typical snugness that I normally feel. It's a little bit more forgiving than that. And again, as I mentioned earlier, the padding and the comfort around the heel and in the ankle actually feels really nice. And I feel like as much as I don't normally like a bunch of padding in my shoes, I didn't mind this. It actually felt really good. And it also did a good job of just kind of keeping everything secure with my foot inside the shoe. The breathability of the warp material is definitely there. I just don't like the look of it. It just, with the black upper that I have, it just kind of looks like I have dog hair all over my shoes. So I'm not a huge fan of the look, but functionally it's definitely doing its job. Two other things that I think are very notable is that one, there's a built-in foot pod in this shoe. And I think right now, I think all of the Under Armour shoes have a built-in foot pod, something that's gonna be able to give you pace and distance information, even if you don't have a phone. You don't have to turn it on. You don't ever have to charge it. You don't ever have to plug it in. It just kind of can detect when you're running in it and it'll start recording an activity. And later on, if you sync it to the Map My Run app on your phone, it'll pick up what those activities were. If you do wanna bring a device with you, you can always bring like your phone and make sure that the Bluetooth connection is there with the foot pod as you start an activity. Then it'll use your phone's GPS and then you can have a GPS tracing as well as pace and distance information that you could view real time as you're running. So it could be really convenient if you don't yet have a GPS watch or if you've just been using a phone and you live in an area where GPS isn't always that great. Like if you live in an urban area and there's a lot of interference from buildings, this could be a nice kind of like built-in free or comes with it option for you. The other thing about this shoe though that I think that a lot of people will need to kind of like consider, I think this is a shoe that a lot of people will probably want to try on first before they get it, is because the arches on this shoe are very, very tall. I definitely felt it and my first kind of like two miles in the shoe, I was worried that like my toes were gonna start getting numb because that's usually what happens when a shoe has high arches. Like it pokes into the arch and I feel like it affects the circulation a little bit and then I get a numbness or a tingliness in the toes. I was pretty sure that I was gonna get that pretty severely in both feet uh, because I just kept feeling those arches. After about the two mile mark or so, I kind of just stopped noticing it and it never ended up being a problem for me. But if you've got lower arches or if you've got flat feet and like high arches are a real problem for you, I would definitely try this shoe on first, preferably in a place where there's a treadmill where you can like run a little bit in it to get a feel for whether or not those high arches are, are gonna bother you. Moving to the outsole, it ended up being surprisingly grippy for me. Again, I normally have thought that I don't like rubberized uh, EVA outsoles because I feel like it's kind of has like the worst of both worlds uh, where it's dense like rubber, but it doesn't have the grip of rubber. But in this instance, it wasn't exactly like soaking wet out there. It wasn't like slippery, muddy conditions that I was running in, but things were a little bit wet. And I did get this onto like the crushed gravel part that's like adjacent to the lakefront trail. Uh, and I did run in the grass a little bit on it and it was kind of like damp on the grass and it held up just fine. So it didn't end up being a problem for me. I had more grip than I was expecting. So a nice, pleasant little surprise. I don't know if it's the pattern that's in this or the composition that they're using, but whatever's going on on this rubberized EVA outsole, it ended up working for me. The one th other thing though, other than the high arches, that I think that like is kind of gives me a little bit of pause and caution with these shoes, is the fact that they're they're pricing these shoes at 160 bucks, which I think is just way too much for this shoe. Normally, I don't spend a lot of time talking about pricing of shoes because it varies by region and by timing. You know, as the shoe exists on the market for a longer time, prices can sometimes go down. But this coming out at 160, I feel like they're trying to send a message with this one. I don't know that the shoe delivers the amount of value that that $160 price point kind of demands. And I think that like, had they brought the shoe out at 130 or better yet, even at 120, I felt like it would have really brought a lot more units. I'm definitely not a pricing guy, but as a consumer running in this shoe, feeling what I felt, I think that 120, 130 is probably the better price. And at that point I'd say it's definitely a solid buy. 
Those are my thoughts on the Under Armour Flow Velocity win after just the first run. Hit that subscribe button and stay tuned so you can see my thoughts on this shoe as I put in a lot more miles on it. If you have any questions about it, feel free to put them down in the comments down below. I'd love to talk to you guys down there or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do just about every day on YouTube, 3 p.m. Central Time, and we can chat or talk about it live. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?